In the last video, we finished the world's cheapest electric boat. In this video, we're gonna make sure this thing fits easily into the back of my truck. Hey everybody, AJ here, and welcome back to the Eagle Ray channel where we do all things DIY electric boats. Marine motors, batteries, solar panels, you name it, if it's got volts and it's on a boat, you're in the right place. Recently, we had some trouble fitting the new project boat, the Yaktoon, into the back of my truck. It was fitting just fine when we started, but last week we changed the brackets in the front, and so now the kayaks sit a little bit wider apart, and that means that it won't slide into the truck bed anymore. So we're gonna fix that today, but there's also a couple other things that are making this boat really hard to use. Why don't we take a look? This thing is way harder to put into the truck than I thought it was gonna be, and here's why. It's not because it's that heavy. It's actually just because it's really awkward. See, I'm trapped between the kayaks right now, and if I try and slip out of the way, oh, I lose all my lifting leverage. See, I can't even get it up there. Also, you remember when I said this from a few weeks ago? Well, we're not sinking yet. I think we can call the waterproofing a tentative success. After all of that waterproofing, we are still getting intrusion into these kayaks. It's not so bad, it's like half a gallon per hour. So I can be out on the lake for a couple hours without any trouble, but I can't be out all day. And that is a real problem because I need to start testing batteries soon. For example, if I bring this bad boy out to the lake and I discharge it all the way to 0%, I'm gonna sink before I finish that test. This is not okay. I've gotta conquer this problem once and for all. So I'm bringing out the big guns. This week we're installing bilge pumps into both of these kayaks. Water intrusion shall not pass! So you know what time it is. It's time to build stuff. A ramp that I bought from Lowe's a long time ago, I've got two of these. With all of these perforations in this aluminum, there's gonna be a lot of scratches on the underside of the kayak. Particle board attachments that will insert into these holes so it'll kind of lock the board into place and wrap it in carpet so that it's nice and soft for those kayak holes.
One of these days, I'm gonna be able to recommend a product that I use on this channel to you guys, but so far, my luck has not been great. I bought two of these because I need one for each kayak. The bilge pump is usually like a tall cylindrical thing, about that tall. But it, I wanted these because they're very low profile, so they should fit pretty well in the kayak. It'll bring water up through there, uh, pump it out through the hose there. This is a tiny electric motor. This is supposed to have a manual and an automatic mode. I mostly wanted these for manual mode anyway. The automatic works on only one of these. Manual works on both of them, so I will still be installing these. Um, but I can't recommend this product because one of them showed up faulty. Black wire to black, brown the red is automatic mode. After a few seconds we should see it activate all on its own because it has a water level sensor. Putting it in water, not sure how deep it needs to be submerged. I think I read in the manual it has to be about an inch and a quarter. It's about that right now. This may be the faulty one. That one seems to be faulty. And there you go, that's manual mode. You just flip the switch so that the, it's on automatically and look how much water it can push. There you go. If they're both faulty, then it makes me feel like I'm doing something wrong. I just don't know what it could be because it's just so simple. This is the faulty one. The other one was the one that was supposed to be working. This one is in automatic mode and it's just on on a low power setting for some reason. That's not even supposed to be a thing as far as I know. It only has one speed setting, 650 uh, gallons per hour. That's what we were seeing when we had this in manual mode was 650 gallons per hour. This is much less than 650 gallons per hour and here's how I can tell. It's gonna pump at a very slow rate. Look at this. See, it's not even able to pump the water out unless I tilt it. See, there it goes. It got some uh, pressure built up inside and it was able to pump a little bit. That's automatic mode. So if, if that were the only mode, I would have to send this back because it is just dead on arrival. Last time I tried this, this was working just fine. And there it is. That is exactly what we need. You can see right through the middle there's a good four inch or so gap between them. This gap is what's stopping this whole thing from fitting in my truck. And you can bring both of these in by a couple of inches. And I think the easiest way to do that is quite simply like so. I need one bolt to go through the whole thing. I could just take this plate off actually and bolt here. That's, that's much better. So it's gonna be pretty much impossible for me to get the camera in there while I'm working, but what I'm essentially about to do is weld this strip here to the bottom of the kayak. This thing is not battery powered. It's supposed to plug into an AC outlet. Enter the Milwaukee top off, which is just that big. Then you have an AC outlet. You also have a back to DC if you need USB off of these. These are pretty cool. Puts out a, a, uh, up to 150 watts if I remember right. And this thing I think takes 80 watts. So it should be plenty to power this. I don't have any single pole, single throw switches, which would just be uh, switch on, switch off like a light bulb. 
but uh, I do have these single pull double throw switches which uh, just give you two options. You can throw to one side or throw to the other. So what I would do is use one of these tabs on for auto, off for the bilge pumps are totally off, no power going to them ever, and then the other option is manual. But because one of those auto modes is broken, I'm not actually going to use the second option here. I'm just going to use this as a single pull, single throw right now. But these will be on board ready to go in case I decide to fix that bilge pump in the future. Honestly, I never remember exactly how they're wired, so what I'm gonna do right now is test continuity on this. That little Wi-Fi symbol, that's the continuity symbol. You should get a beep anytime you have a, a circuit that makes a connection between these two points. The center pin is always neutral. So if we go here to here, we should get no connection. And then I think if we throw this upward, we should hear a beep now. Nope. There it is. Okay. So you throw the, the first pin up and the, the pin on the opposite side is actually active and you throw down and it should be the other side is active. Yep. And there it goes. just flooded this kayak with several gallons of water and I'm gonna see if this bilge pump will get any of that water up back. Oh, there it goes. Look at that. I think we might have got most of it. I did see a little bit of water trying to get out, but there wasn't enough pressure left at the pump to keep pressing. So I think it might be close to empty, but I'm gonna lift it right now because I lifted it right before we did this to confirm about how heavy it was. So if it's about that same weight again, yeah, I think it got, I think it got most of it. Let's test the second one to be sure. There we go. Push the wrong button. A few days ago, I bought an electric winch to make it even easier to load up the yak tube. On my way to Harbor Freight, even though I said I never would again. This winch has given me so many problems and it's not because it's cheap. Well, I mean, it is cheap. It's from Harbor Freight. The prices are too good here, I can't help it. I know, I know, I will never learn my lesson, but this winch does actually work as intended. I just wasn't using it that way. See, I tried to mount it with ratchet straps rather than bolting it to the chassis, and that ended up causing all kinds of problems. So the entire winch situation deserves its own video one day. I just need a little more time to get that working. So as it stands, it's actually pretty easy for me to push the boat up the ramp manually. But I couldn't be happier with these ramps. They work exactly as intended, and it's probably a good thing too, because I gotta get to the lake one last time this week so that we can test out these new build pumps.
That is it for the Yaktoon series, guys. I have so many ideas for things I still want to do to change this boat, but we're going to have to move on to motor and battery test next week, because next week we're testing this motor and this battery together. We're going to see what they can do on the test bench, and then we're going to take them out to the lake and see if they perform similarly in the real world. Thanks so much for watching my first series. Like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and don't forget to come to the live stream on Sunday at 2 p.m. because I'm still giving away this Milwaukee angle grinder as soon as we hit a thousand subscribers. Rules are in the description. And remember to set aside some time to get out on the water and enjoy yourself. Until then, boat safe, take care.